Hello folks, this is Glenn Guy, your travel photography guru. Please excuse my voice, it's a little deeper than normal. Uh, I'm suffering from the lurgy at the moment. Okay, so we're in Lightroom, and what I wanted to show you briefly was the lens correction panel. So here I am in Lightroom in the develop module. You can see where the mouse is up here on the top right of the screen, and the develop module is um, highlighted. The develop module consists of uh, numerous um, menus, if you like, or sub-menus. Uh, the one we're interested in is lens correction at this stage. So let me just go to uh, the original version of the picture in question. Uh, it's um, a detail of the facade outside Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. And you know, it's as close as I could get, and I'm having to shoot up at a, an angle, um, doing my best to keep um, the vertical straight but there's too much information around the primary characters, if you like. Um, so there's a couple of things I needed to do first of all. So if we go over here to the bottom left of the screen and you'll see the, uh, the history panel. Um, so the import is the original image as it comes into Lightroom. And then um, I um, went to the upright perspective and it's pretty slight in this case, but you can see that it's um, just straightening up our uh, horizon a little bit, uh, our vertical lines. So that was useful. Um, then I uh, cropped the image. The reason there's several crops there is that I was uh, playing around choosing which crop was the right one. It's remembering all of these steps. One of the great things about the history in Lightroom is it's there forever. Uh, you close the file, you come back to it a year later, it's still there. Photoshop only keeps the history states until you save the file. Um, the changes are saved, but the history is not. So I think that's a major advantage Lightroom has there. Um, so once the image was uh, cropped, you know, it's uh, a much better composition now. Uh, I made a few other adjustments to the image and um, that's what we have. Uh, so after this processing, I then took the file from Lightroom. It's a very easy uh, process to go from Lightroom into Photoshop where I converted it into black and white and added a few extra features to bring up the uh, textual and shape qualities of the photo. It's not necessary to go into Photoshop. Um, in fact, Lightroom um, um, converts colour to black and white very easy, very efficiently, but uh, there's a couple other extra f uh, things I do inside Photoshop. So. It's part of my workflow to go Lightroom, Photoshop, and back into Lightroom uh, in this manner so we can find the photos. And in fact, what I also do then is I um, group the photos. So here's the finished image, if you like. And then if I was to click on this little um, um, vertical double line here, there's a couple ways to do it, but it's now opened up um, this um, this group of pictures and we can see them individually. If I click on the double lines again, back to that single file. So that takes me from the finished file to um, the original image. It's particularly good, it's called stacking actually. So we're grouping the image, individual images into stacks. It's particularly good for those folks who are interested in HDR photography, where you'll have three original files, five, seven, even nine original files. And it just makes navigation of images uh, in this grid mode in, light, in the library module, here we are at the top of the screen, a little bit difficult. So um, once you've got your images in there and you've um, processed them into that HDR composite image, then it's, as we've done here in this case, it's a good idea just to group them together into a stack and collapse the stack. So now you're just looking at your finished file. I hope that makes sense. We'll look at a couple, uh, or we'll look at another image in a moment where we can uh, explore the uh, perspective correction capabilities in Lightroom. Okay, here's another photograph. Uh, in this case, it's the obelisk in uh, Paris. And there are some uh, issues with this one because it's not straight. Um, that doesn't necessarily bother me. Um, makes me start to think that I might abstract the image in all manner of ways, but just, just for the sake of this exercise, we want to straighten it up. So we go over here to our lens correction, and in this case I've gone over to the far right and clicked on the word manual. 
So we're going to make some manual adjustments to this. So if we want to straighten it up, we might get the uh, vertical uh, slider, for instance. And I'll move it a fair ways. And then we could get the horizontal slider and maybe uh, actually straighten up our horizon. And, you know, we can just do it visually. There are those, there's that grid pattern that appears, which will help you uh, align vertical uh, and or horizontal lines within the, um, the image. So in this particular case, we've got some vertical lines uh, in the structure. So um, they're the, the lines in the grid that I would be paying the most attention to. So that's uh, done a reasonable job in straightening it up. Uh, and of course, in doing so, it's had to completely realign the photo and um, there are these white edges that have suddenly appeared. So you want to get rid of those and constrain crop box down the bottom, which you can click, click either before you make your adjustments manually or after, or get rid of um, um, that white space. Problem being, of course, that uh, we've cropped the photo because this is what happens whenever you um, use this lens correction feature, a cropping occurs. So that tells us really that, um, let me go back in history to the before state. Before we did our um, uh, any kind of perspective corrections, I'll click on that and it just happens to be contrast because that's where I was prior to this exercise. So that, if you like, is before. And then we go back up to the top of history and that's where we finished. So it's done a very good job of straightening things up without any sort of noticeable distortion. The problem being that it's cropped the photo. So the lesson for the unwary is that when you make the photos, you've got to include um, some extra space um, to allow for the cropping. And the more adjustments you feel you need to make in lens correction, the more space you need to include around the subject initially. Um, and that, that's a little bit tricky to get the head round at first, but um, you get used to it pretty quickly. I actually made this shot before I used to do any uh, lens correction uh, in Lightroom. Uh, and also, I point out that it was shot from a moving bus. So, you know, it was literally a couple seconds in which I had to make decisions. But I think even though it's not great, it does uh, show us um, the advantages of lens correction and the, the potential problems associated with it. So here's another shot from Paris, this time the Eiffel Tower. And again, we're in lens corrections manual. So uh, for the sake of it, I'll click the constrain crop uh, feature first this time. Um, and um, our main issue is the, the tilting of the, the structure. So I'll go to the vertical slider <clears throat> and I'll move that to uh, straighten up our vertical somewhat. And then I'll move the, uh, this time the rotate slider um, to get us back onto a horizontal keel. So we're going the wrong way here. I'll go back the other way. Just until you get it, uh, until you get your lines looking relatively straight. So I'm actually aligning on the verticals in this case. And let's have a look at that. I'll go over to history and go back before we did any, anything in the um, lens correction pane. Before, after. So it's a very different image and, you know, there will be plenty of times where we actually prefer the um, before version. But if the vertical lines bother you being uh, crooked, then this is a great way to get around it. And because I left plenty of space around the image when I made the shot, it's certainly possible. Okay, folks, let's look at this final option. This is an image from my ebook, Photographing Cemeteries, which takes us all around the world. Um, Europe, South America, South Georgia Island on the way to Antarctica, India, Australia, lots of interesting places to look at some fantastic cemeteries. Really um, a compelling project, one I loved. And uh, there's a lot in the book, um, not just the pictures of the cemeteries, but really um, an underlying approach to photography from an artistic point of view, plus lots and lots of uh, technical information in there as well. So this particular photo is from La Perchaise Cemetery in Paris, famous for the final resting place of Oscar Wilde, Jim Morrison from The Doors, Sarah Bernhardt and, and many, many more luminaries. 
So let's have a look at this photo. I actually like it the way it is, but if we wanted to try to um, straighten up the perspective, we go to our lens correction panel and uh, let's, by the way, let's have a close look. Uh, I'm going to click firstly the enable profile correction and I'm going to also click remove chromatic aberration. Now we won't be able to see the effect of the remove chromatic aberration here, but it's something I would always recommend you do <clears throat> because what it's uh, looking at is any colorings on the edges of uh, areas, for instance, a red rock against a blue sky. And if you were to enlarge the image in um, an area like that, you'll sometimes see uh, a false color um, that's created where the pixels are actually turned into a color that they're not in reality. Um, so this is one way to overcome that. It can occur uh, due to inadequacies in the lenses we're using. So to get rid of these um, false colors, um, the remove chromatic aberration um, is useful. You can click on the color tab here and actually manually get in and work on the uh, chromatic aberration, but it's a little tricky. So I'm gonna leave that uh, for today's demonstra demonstration other than just to say it's there. Something that's really important is you would normally uh, click on enable profile correction and um, what will happen then is the software will work out, oh, your Canon camera and it was your 24 to 105 lens, etc. And that um, actually, let's just switch it off for a second. That will take into account some of the, um, the bows and perspective issues associated with your lens and actually uh, correct for those. It's a fantastic feature and um, the folks at Adobe have pre-programmed Lightroom um, with many of the lenses on the market, particularly for the major, manuf major manufacturers like Canon and Nikon, uh, with a lot of the um, uh, inadequacies of those lenses corrected and therefore it's great because it can um, enable you to get rid of a lot of those problems just by clicking enable profile correction. So <clears throat> there it is, it's switched on. Now you don't have to click on profile. If you just click under the basic tab on enable profile correction, it switches it on in this area here. Constrain crop, let's go for that. Now, rather than go over to the manual tab and start messing around, almost always I'm happy just to try the auto option down here. So we see upright is, um, is uh, the default. So we're looking after um, verticals in our image, uh, basically, and we click on auto. Let's see what happens. Now, it's always good just to go back. So let me go back one step in history. That's before and that's after. So, you know, if keeping the subject matter upright in the image is particularly important to you, that's a very good solution most of the time. But sometimes I just like the original effect um, and you know sometimes the problems with perspective can actually enhance the image particularly if it's of a more abstract nature but you've got an option so it only takes a moment to try it and then you can make your decision then. So I hope you've enjoyed that little uh, demonstration there's a bit more to the lens correction uh, panel but um, this is a beginning and um, it's one of the great features that's in uh, the, the current version of Lightroom. So thanks for your attention and I hope to talk with you again soon. Great, bye for now.